Hello and welcome to Fortress Alaska. I'm your host Dave and today we're going to be looking at the Ruger P85. So let's start with going over the basic features of the Ruger P85. It came initially with three dot sights. They are not luminescent, they are not tritium, they do not glow in the dark, but they are basic three dot combat sights. It uses the SIG 220 style of lockup as opposed to the old Colt 1911 style of lockup. It does have a link, bar a link on the barrel, and we'll see that when we do the disassembly. It has a combination slide release slide stop, as you can see. And it's actually very easy to use. Unlike some slide releases, this one releases quite easily. It has a combination safety decocker. So when you lower the safety, it decocks. Then you put it back up into the fire position. When it is on safe, it disconnects the trigger. It does nothing. When it's in the fire, it will work as double action is obviously also single action. It has an ambidextrous slide route, I mean an ambidextrous safety decocker is on both sides and we have a ambidextrous magazine release obviously on both sides and it works quite well. It also has a lanyard loop because it was meant for military service and it uses the standard double stack single feed 9mm magazine holding 15 rounds. One thing to note is a safety issue. There was an initial recall on the Ruger P85. I can try to get that to film right there. That should say Mark II, MK and Roman numeral II. You look for that if you're going to buy a Ruger P85 because the safety system at the time was such that if the firing pin should get broken and you decocked it, it had enough energy and pass through to actually fire the cartridge. So they made a minor design change. Any pistol that was bought before, when they modified it, they put Mark II on it, and then the other ones are just labeled Mark II. So you want to make sure you have a Ruger P85 Mark II, and not a P85 if you're going to uh, intend on carrying it or doing anything with it. If not, I suggest contacting Ruger. A brief history of the Ruger P85. It was a successful pistol for Ruger. They had multiple variants, including the P85, P89, P90, P91, P94, P345, and I think one or two others. They were available in 9mm and 40 Smith & Wesson. They were also available, well, the P345 was available in 45 ACP. Uh, and over the years, they switched from the cast aluminum frame into a polymer frame. And it should be noted that most of the parts are cast, investment cast, so it is a bit heavy and clunky gun, and it is nowhere near as nice and ergonomic as a Browning High Power, nor a uh, Bread M9. So, but it was very cost effective for the average individual like me, and that's where its big market was, was the private sector market. Let's take a look at disassembly of the P85. It's not as convenient as a more modern pistol, or I shall say it, some better design pistols. Ruger's not the best at takedown for most of their pistols. Uh, I think that's how they keep their cost down. So, one thing you do, remove the magazine, verify it's empty. Rack the slide back, verify there's nothing in that chamber. Lock the slide back. Now you know it's safe. There's nothing in the chamber, no magazine. There's this little lever right there. If you can see it, that's actually the ejector. So you just reach down and push it down out of the way. Now, if you can see, it is a rather clunky piece of metal there that now blocks the magazine well. So there's nowhere you can forget about that now because once you insert a magazine, it pushes it right back into place. So for now, it's just out of the way. Now you have to remove this uh, slide stop and slide release. There's a button on this side or the other side of the pin. You have to push that out. Mind you, this is a bit clunky and not as easy as it looks. But you have to hold that back and then you can pull it out. And it is captive, which is very nice. And then, as you see, the slide just removes. So you have now disassembled the pistol for cleaning. As you can see, this is 
rather dirty from my shooting. And you can see this assemble here. One thing to note is whenever you see things that you want to pay attention to their orientation, uh, how they came out. So this is the, the, the link for the system. So the recoil spring is not captured, but it is definitely easy enough to tell which way it goes back in. And then you just have to make sure that this link is in the right orientation when you put it back together. So that's how you disassemble it for cleaning. And uh, you can then also just pop the barrel out. And yeah, it's greasy. I was experimenting with some grease. I usually don't use grease, but in this particular one, I was experimenting with it. And uh, so there you go. All disassembled for cleaning, and I'm going to clean it. I have now thoroughly cleaned it and uh, I'm doing an experiment here so the thing with the grease was I was checking the cold weather use of it I always question people when they say how, how well grease works in the temperatures and I've had this down to minus 10 and I haven't had any issues so I would say the grease is passing below minus 10 I don't go out shooting uh, and I'm not a combat soldier so I don't have to go out below minus 10 so the grease works well in extreme cold which is good for me so let's show you how it reassembles and I, I just went to oil again because I was just testing the grease. I got it free. So anyways, first thing you want to do is put the barrel back in. Now, I do find it interesting that Ruger used the link, swinging link, toggle link, whatever you want to call this link system, when nobody else had really been using it except 1911s. I mean, they should have switched, but they didn't. Uh, to the linkless system but anyways it is uh it is what it is so then we put the recoil sling back in remember as we said notice when you take it apart this part went back towards the rear of the gun so we'll slide that in the inside and always be careful holding this stuff and wear safety glasses because you can send things flying across a room or into your face so so i've got that back into place just like it was when we started which holds the link perfectly in place which is unlike a 1911 where you have to make sure the links in the right place when you try to reassemble so it appears to be in the right place so key things here make sure on a Ruger P85 that that lever is still in the down position you can see it you can see it shining in there because it slide will not go back on if that's up so once you have the slide fully reassembled you put the slide onto the frame you do have to it makes it easier if you hold the hammer back for a while you then slide it back you see those notches there you have to line up and then you wiggle this down in being very careful to line that up making sure it's in the right spot and push it in and then it falls closed now you function check it, double action works, single action works, slide works, decocker works. So she's all functional. Magazines, I usually just wipe mine off real quickly, make sure there's no debris left on it. So we just wipe the magazine off. I don't oil the magazine, I just wipe it off. Make sure there's nothing on it. Insert it back into the magazine well. And there we have it. One reassembled P85. Ready to go. So in closing, this is your host Dave with Fortress Alaska One. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Leave comments, ask questions, share with your friends. Uh, and as always, have a good day and go out shooting.